doing business in Africa offers a large number of opportunities, but trust me, it comes with its own challenges. My name is Your Heritage, and among some of my businesses in Ghana are uh, event center, recording and photography studio, digital television, hotel and lodging services. Now, in Ghana, running multiple businesses also means dealing with different personalities. I mean, you will find some individuals who are trustworthy and reliable, but there are a huge number of people who can pose a risk to your business. And being able to identify and avoid these individuals is crucial for the success in the African market. In this video, we will explore some of the types of people to steer clear away from when conducting business in Africa. So let's get into it. The first group of people are the opportunists. Now I call them the opportunistic middlemen. You see, this group of people often try so hard to insert themselves into every business transaction as intermediaries. Now they are smart because they claim to facilitate deals and provide connections. This group of people often lack genuine expertise or value in the field because at the end game, it's only for their personal gain and they could care less about the success of your business. Most often their involvement leads to unnecessary complications and added costs. So so if you are a foreigner looking to start any type of business in Africa, beware of these middlemen who are uncertain about the role that they play in the business and try to demand excessive fees upfront. The second group of people I call the fixers. Now they are similar to the middlemen, but this group always try to come up with ways to speed up processes through questionable means. Now everything is a quick fix and they will use words like this is Africa, this is Ghana, anything is possible. You know the terms if you have had any experience doing business across Africa. Now this group of people will engage in bribery, they will engage in corruption or illicit activities to achieve the objectives. Trust me guys, while this group will promise heaven and earth to move mountains and provide quick results associating with them, will tarnish your reputation and expose you to legal risk even before you step into the business. So look out for this unscrupulous world in what I call the unscrupulous fixes. The third group of people I call the smooth talkers. Now, if you look carefully, you can clearly identify this group of personalities. They are very charismatic and persuasive. Now, what they truly excel at is selling themselves and their ideas. It is easy to get swayed away by their charm, but behind that mask, there is no substance or integrity. See, these type of business partners make big promises but fail to deliver on their commitment. This is why before trusting to enter into partnership with someone, it is crucial to conduct a thorough due diligence to verify their track record and credentials first. Number four, the overly aggressive negotiator. See, one will say, Roy, but negotiating is good. The more aggressive, the better, right? wrong. You see, negotiating is an important part of business, but dealing with an overly aggressive negotiator can be a problem. Now, I've seen this happen in my everyday life where I meet potential business partners who have aggressive negotiators as part of their team, and it never ends well at the end. These individuals employ bullying tactics or resort to intimidation to secure favorable terms. When you have to deal with such people, stand your ground and avoid succumbing to pressure tactics that compromise your interests. Listen attentively, guys. This could save you from a lot of stress in the future because today you must do business with an aggressive negotiator. Tomorrow they will turn on you and give you a taste of the same medicine. So beware. Number five, the next group of people are so many in Ghana, so much so that Ghana has crafted its own term called the Ghana time. Now the next group of people are chronic time wasters. They are never on time for anything. I think the only time majority of Africans respect is when, you know, we have a visa appointment and it's surprising because every time I get to the embassy, most people are already on time because of how strict these organizations or embassies are with punctuality. Time is of the essence in business, but these group of individuals seem to be unable to make timely decisions or follow through on business agreements. So if you are dealing with such individuals, they will delay the progress and frustrate efforts to move projects forward. This is the nature of running a business in Ghana. Nothing is on time. You apply for a passport. It takes forever to be done. Permits are never on time. As I'm speaking to you now, I have letters of administration requests pending in the courts for almost two years now. Court cases take forever to come to a decision. And the problem is not the system. No, the issue is related to individuals who run the offices in the system. Everyone Everyone is too relaxed and do things at their own pace. They do things when they feel like. So in order to make sure people take your business seriously, identify these chronic time wasters, set clear deadlines and expectations to avoid getting caught in this endless loop of delays. Ah, it's just frustrating talking about this. Unbelievable.
Number six, the unreliable partner. C, trust and reliability are important qualities in business partnerships, but some individuals consistently fail to honor their commitments or fulfill their obligations in the business. Now, you will notice that these group of people frequently miss deadlines, they always make excuses, and they exhibit constant personality traits of dishonesty. Now, if you are watching me, you know someone who is doing this and undermining your business, but you are still with them, right? We all do, but it is important to realize and work towards it so it doesn't at the end jeopardize the reputation of you know the business in the long run i call the seventh group the insincere collaborator you see collaborations are often a key to success in business but not all collaborators have genuine intentions this group of individuals may find you know interest in partnerships while secretly pursuing their own agenda when dealing with such people the key is to exercise caution when sharing sensitive information or resources so for me what i usually do is to prioritize those relationships that is built on mutual trust and transparency number eight i saw this video about a diaspora a female who tried to look for investors for a business project in ghana things didn't go well and she ended up getting sued listening to her with the involvement of police and all the stress she had to go through brings me to my next group of people to avoid when doing business in africa the short sighted opportunist you see it is important to consider the long-term implications of you know business decisions beware of people who prioritize short-term gains over sustainable mutually beneficial partnerships this group of people focus on the immediate profits that is if you are not careful will sacrifice the entire business plan and overlook the potential risk during the business so watch this it's very important for you to protect yourself when you are doing business in ghana or in africa in general i haven't been to africa to other parts of Africa, but I've lived in Ghana for six, over six years. You know, part, you know, I had a good experience there in some way, but I also had a lot of bad experiences um, specifically relating to business. I went into business with a group of people. A couple of them were silent investors and those silent investors were from abroad. A couple of them were Ghanaian and one was from another uh, African country. We all invested a certain amount of money into this business. And the thing about this business was that it wasn't like it was just my idea I wasn't the spearhead of the business. We all sat down, um, a group of like-minded individuals who felt like we wanted to start this thing up. It was a digital business that we were planning to start up. We all invested a certain amount of money. We all signed signed you know agreements for the business to start and all of that. Eventually, the business didn't go according to plan. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. It just didn't go according to plan. Like It didn't pan out the way we expected it to pan out. Um, one individual in the business who had invested money in the business had clearly invested his last money into the business because when he he felt like he should have been receiving money back quite quickly and it wasn't going to work out like that you know because as you know in business you invest money and when you invest that money you don't expect to receive that money back immediately you don't even you shouldn't even expect to see that money for a very long time if you're setting up a business and you're investing money into it that's the nature of business but this guy, for some reason, felt like he had a case to try and, one, take legal action, like in a civil way, as in a civil case, and also take it to the police as a criminal case as well. So this guy went to the police to say that his money had been stolen um, for a business deal that he didn't, that he was, you know, he, he was like he was, he was uh, fooled in terms of he put money into the business and he was expecting money back quickly and he didn't get that money back. It wasn't as simple as that, this is a Ghanaian guy, someone who works a normal nine to five job, who had a bit of extra cash to invest in the business and he felt like he should have got that back money back immediately. Imagine investing money into a property business. Imagine doing that and then just getting angry if you don't receive the money back. You don't, re you don't um, like, not necessarily receive the money back, but you don't sort of break even for yourself within a, f a few months, like three months, you expect that money back. It, do it doesn't work like that. Maybe you're the remedy. These nine group of people are what I call the whiners. Now, if you guess right, the name explains the attitude. This group of people have the habits to complain. They are always expressing dissatisfaction with whatever direction the business goes. Whiners will always focus on problems rather than solutions. Now, this is how you know you have a whiner in your team, when there is never peace in the group. It is easy to locate a whiner when you notice the spread of negativity amongst colleagues. Whiners cause constant complaints, which create a toxic work environment. As a business owner, 
particular, you should be able to identify these individuals before it leads to low morale. And if you know anything about low morale, you will know that low morale will lead to decreased productivity amongst employees. Sooner or later, Finance may challenge the authority of leaders in the organization and weaken the effectiveness of leadership. So look out for this group of individuals. Now the tenth and the last group of people I call the tribal provocator, the tribal instigator, or the you know, the troublemaker. As a foreigner, it is important to have good relationships with the locals in the community where your business functions. Now, this group of people will make it difficult for your business to flourish within the locality that you find yourself. Now, this group always pick fights with other Africans in the name of protecting your business, but secretly protecting their own best interests. If you have a tribal instigator in your team, feedback is shut down, people feel intimidated in an environment dominated by fear. Now, there is no innovation, no creativity, peace people feel they can't speak freely. When you have these troublemakers in the team, you rest assured signs of internal issues will be difficult to identify and take measures to address these conflicts. For a business to flourish in a healthy environment, there must be open communication, which is shut down when you have tribal instigators as partners in the team. So by recognizing the warning signs and characteristics of individuals to avoid, you can mitigate risk and encourage relationships that will contribute to your success in African markets. Guys, do your due diligence and always trust your instinct and prioritize partnerships built on mutual respect, built on integrity and built on shared values. My name is Your Heritage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <music>